So NASA has released some disturbing video of lakes that are bubbling in the remote Arctic tundra. Now, I'm going to have to explain why this is problematic, but I think you'll, I think you'll understand. Uh, now, first, some context. The international research team funded by NASA, as part of their Arctic Boreal Vulnerability Experiment, codenamed ABOVE, recently published their results of that study in Nature Communications. So they went up to study climate change uh, in the Arctic and see how bad it's actually getting. Well, it turns out it's pretty bad. What they found were bubbling lakes as greenhouse gases are released from the previously frozen ground, leading to increased greenhouse gas emissions and a warming positive feedback. Which, by the way, is not at all positive when it comes to civilization. So, okay, what happens is climate change, global warming, uh, is basically driven by greenhouse gases being released into the atmosphere from things like burning oil and, and gas industry, right? Methane from fracking is another good example. Uh, that's melting the Arctic permafrost. That permafrost contains carbon, which was frozen in the atmosphere millions of years ago, buried under the ice, which is then being released into the atmosphere, which drives even more global warming. In addition, the team also investigated the presence of something called thermokarst lakes. Now, these small pocket lakes are produced from melting permafrost. Now, the interesting thing about this is that when you have a small lake in the middle of ice, well, basically a melted area, what it does is that that water, since it has a larger volume than water, or I should say ice has a larger volume than water, when permafrost melts, the land in the area tends to sag. That creates a depression. That small lake is there. Uh, that also leads to faster melting of the permafrost and quicker release of greenhouse gases. So once you start melting, once you start getting these thermokarst lakes, that increases the amount of melting because now you've got the water there as well. Oh boy. Now they explain in the study that the sudden release of greenhouse gases from that melting permafrost will trigger a positive feedback as it adds to overall warming, as I mentioned before. Now, what's even more disastrous about this is that researchers found that this process can be quite abrupt, leading to a larger and quicker impact on global warming. Now, that backs up other research that says that global warming, it's happening right now, and it's getting exponentially worse. It's increasing faster than what we've than what previous models have actually said before. Now, what have we done in the face of this? I mean, this is happening. We have documented evidence. We have proof. There is uh, melting permafrost. We've got more carbon in the atmosphere. What have we done in America? We've elected a child who thinks climate change is a hoax made up by the Chinese. It's not just a punchline to a bad joke, but it actually has terrible policy implications, including the United States removing itself from the Paris Climate Accords and basically doubling down on coal. The government under Trump has eliminated a lot of regulations, slapped tariffs on solar panels, making them more expensive, eliminated fuel standards, but and of course, without those standards, uh, you will actually end up using more fuel in your cars, which of course leads to more carbon in the atmosphere and more warming. We're already in the middle of a climate catastrophe and through the actions of, or I should say inactions of our government, it's only going to get worse. Now, scientists have speculated that even if we were to release, or I'm sorry, to cease all the releases of carbon that we can, from industry, if we were to stop and become carbon like neutral, no carbon at all, we would not be able to undo the damage that we have caused to the environment already. The Arctic is literally melting and bubbling as we speak. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do about it. The damage is already done. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't go to alternative energy sources. We absolutely should. We should do it now. But what I'm saying is, 
is that climate change is already baked into the equation. We've known about it for decades and decided that as a society, corporate profits were more important than making sure that we don't mess up the environment. Just pointing that out there. Look, ExxonMobil knew they had internal studies that pointed to, hey, if we keep burning fossil fuels, we are going to have climate change, we're going to have global warming, and it's going to be a disaster. So I'm just letting you guys know what the stakes are and what's going to happen. We're already going to face an uncertain, definitely warmer future when it involves the climate. And what we should do is to make sure that we don't make it worse. It's already going to be bad, but we can take steps now to make sure it's not worse. Now, that is going to involve a major revolution in the way that we generate and use energy in this country. That shift's not going to happen, however. Under the Trump administration, we're going in the wrong direction. We're going to continue to go in the wrong direction until we elect politicians that actually do care about the environment. Unless we... Uh, you know, get involved in the political process because we are at crisis point and uh, it's not going to get any better. And if we don't do something, it's going to get worse. We've got to do something. We've got to do something now. Get involved. Uh, there are elections. There are midterms. They do have consequences, especially for the environment. So we need to go out and do as much as we can. And, uh, that's all we can do. <laughs> I wish I had better news for you guys. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.